Hey everybody. Um, this evening what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a repair on our uh, Sears Kenmore dryer. Uh, this is actually, it's badged Sears Kenmore, but it's actually made by the Frigidaire Corporation. Uh, it was made for, the, for, for Sears under the Kenmore name. So uh, this is a very popular model. They made, oh, I don't know, who knows how many thousands of these. So let me show you the symptom that the dryer has right now uh, before we take it apart. So if we uh, turn the dryer on, The other uh, interesting fact about the dryer is that if we put any clothes in this thing, we load it up and put any kind of weight or resistance on this drum, it will not want to turn and the belt will start to burn. So we've got a couple of things going on here. The belt's probably ruined from that happening, but the belt wasn't the root cause. The root cause, more than likely, is the bearing that's in the back here. So in this video, we're actually going to cover the disassembly so uh, of the dryer in order to replace the bearing in the back and the belt and also because if you want to buy these parts separately uh, they end up adding up in price pretty quick it actually makes more sense to buy the kit there's a repair or for lack of a better term overhaul kit that actually contains this bearing the new belt, I believe it actually has the idler pulley, which we'll show that in a bit, and um, the glide, what they call the glide in the front here, and the felt. I think that's all in the kit. Well, we'll check it out. But the first thing I need to do is, because this is in a stacking situation, I need to get this dryer out of here and out onto the floor where we can work on it. All right, so the first step is to, uh, of course, unplug the dryer. Next step is to remove this whole face frame with the front control panel. In order to do that, I'm going to open this up 
I've got to remove the lid screen and also this assembly right here which is held on by two screws from the back side. You're going to find a lot of lint stuck in here. Good idea to have a vacuum cleaner handy. There are two little wires here, the little spade connectors. They push on to two little spade lugs right here. You gotta be careful you don't break that. What those are, they actually go to these two little bars right here. These bars actually sense the moisture that's left in the air so that the dryer can have an idea of how dry the clothes are. Next up, in preparation for removal of the front control panel and the front uh, whole front assembly there, I want to disconnect this wiring harness. So there's a plug right here. If you're fortunate, all you have is one or two plugs you can unplug to disconnect all of the wiring going to this front unit. In my case, two of the wires have been actually uh, more permanently put together with crimp type connectors. These are Judging from the thickness, they're high current carrying wires. So I don't know whether or not this was a modification. Maybe they had a problem where maybe originally they were feeding that power through this plug. And maybe they found a problem where the connection would go bad and it would overheat this plug and melt it. And that the fix they came up with was to bypass the plug altogether because I don't recall ever doing this. I have, re I have repaired this in the past, but I don't recall ever doing this. So to disconnect these plugs, usually it's pretty self-explanatory. In this case, you pinch these two sides here, and it just unplugs like that. Pretty easy and straightforward. Doesn't look like the remnants of pins are still in there, so I don't think this ever... I don't think these two wires ever went through a plug like this. But it does create a problem for me now because it's not allowing me to disconnect this completely. So I'm going to see whether or not I can disconnect those wires up here. If I have to, I will cut these two wires and crimp them back together with crimp connectors when I'm done with the repair. The next thing I've got to do to get this panel free is I've got to get to two screws that are down inside here. And this one's kind of hard to see. So right down here, there's a screw above what appears to be some sort of a clip. And that screw is mirrored on the other side. So we've got to get this screw out and that screw out. All right, so once I've removed those two screws that are about six inches down on the inside here, one on each side, again, go back to a large putty knife or something to pry with. pop this out. Okay, now you can see at this point the only thing that's really holding this up and from me pulling the whole thing out is my wiring harness here. So, a plastic wire tie right here. If your plugs are small enough, you might be able to feed them right through the, the loop in the wire tie. I'm just going to cut the wire tie because I've got plenty of plenty of those wire ties and come back and replace it later and I'm looking at where these wires go to see whether or not there's an easy way for me to unhook this and I could see that one of these two red wires goes over to a uh, spade terminal on the timer assembly but it's one of those ones that actually has a second wire crimped into it so that's not going to be the answer there so Unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut these two wires. Oops. I've got this balanced on a uh, wooden bench to uh, basically help me keep it up at a height that's easier to work with. But that, in turn, makes it a little more unstable. So. You obviously wouldn't have to worry about this tipping back on you after pulling that off. And looking down inside here, quick inspection, the first thing I notice is, oh, look at this. Broken off piece of plastic. 
So what this broken piece of plastic is, is it's the remnants of one of these. Uh, these hunks of plastic right here that are attached to the top of this inside lip over this felt are called glides or glide bearings. They actually act as a bearing surface and the uh, drum's supposed to basically spin freely on this. So what happens is when these are missing, uh, the drum is rubbing on this felt that's in here. And literally, you can see this is all discolored. It's pretty much burnt. So we're gonna end up replacing that with what's in the kit. We're almost ready to remove that drum assembly. Before we do, we're gonna take off this panel, this access panel on the back. It's gonna give us access to the uh, idler pulley and the motor pulley where the belt goes around so that we can disengage the belt from that motor. Ah, be it ever so horrid. So what we're looking at is, uh, we're looking at, that's actually the pulley that's on the motor shaft. Here's the belt. There's the idler right there on this arm. So what this does is, this is under spring tension. It's pushing on this belt to actually tighten the belt. So if we pull that back, we'll be able to slack the belt enough to pop it off of the pulley. There's all bits of uh, ground rubber and everything on the bottom here, as well as a ton of um, lint buildup that we're going to get rid of. All right, so one last thing we have to do is a plastic bracket, for lack of a better term, right here. It's held in by one screw. And it's actually what's keeping this from being able to just tumble out and fall out the front here. Now, with that out of the way, you can actually grab onto the belt, use it almost as if it was a carry handle, lift up on the drum, pull the drum free from the back, and then guide it out the front. Wow, what an ugly mess. And that bearing looks like heck. So you can see there's a blanket of lint and everything. All that's going to have to be cleaned out. All this lint around the motor, that's not good. The windings aren't... Are, it's acting like a blanket of insulation that's going to keep those windings hotter than they need to be. Uh, we're going to clean out that area in there where the heating element is. And more importantly, uh, take a look at what's left of that bearing. So this is the uh, rear bearing cup. That's in really sad shape. So there's a metal ball on a bracket on the back of the uh, drum that we'll see a little, in a little bit that actually rides in that. Ah, there we go. Much better. You know, you don't need to get this spotless unless you really want to. A lot of the lint gets stuck and can be tough to get off. This right here is the heating element. So you want to be really careful you don't damage that. When the dryer is running, this glows red hot. This is that bearing cup assembly I was talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop that out right now. The way that that works is there's two screws right here that are kind of long that go all the way through this metal bracket, through the plastic cup, and then into the back. There's actually a little piece on the back, I believe, that's going to fall off when I take these two screws out. Here's that little metal bracket on the back. When I take those two screws out, this will just come off. Here it is removed. There's a little metal ball that sits right in here, and when that little bracket falls off the back, the ball tends to want to fall out, so you want to try and catch that ball. Here it is. Here's the ball. Let's open up this box I got in from Zorro that contains the kit. I found this kit on sale uh, all over the internet. With quite a, quite a different uh, disparity in prices. There's original parts and then there's aftermarket. I think the price of this entire kit with shipping was $45. This is genuine, this is not an aftermarket kit. Belt, new belt. There's that top assembly with the three glides. Installation instructions, new idler pulley. The belt tensioner if you prefer. The bearing kit, which is all these pieces over here I just showed you, plus the metal ball that's actually attached to the drum which we're going to take off and this is probably adhesive for the felt. 
Oh, I decided to focus on the felt replacement. That way the adhesive can be curing as I uh, work on the rear bearing later. So I just uh, used a putty knife and ripped off this old felt assembly with the glides. Now this is a replacement for a previously used uh, factory um, system that used a Teflon impregnated uh, piece of felt up here I believe. So you may not see something like this in your unit, but uh, that just means that yours is probably the original. But that thing with the plastic pieces on it is the is the authorized replacement for that. So I've got to get all of this um, felt that's still stuck here off. This is going to take a while. All right, have I finished installing the new felt assembly with the glides? And I also installed the lower felt assembly. And uh, while I'm waiting for that to cure, that adhesive is pretty quick drying. But uh, I'm going to let it just set and work on the uh, replacing the rear bearing there. But I think it looks uh, like it's going to be okay. Um, those of you who are really good observers may have noticed that when I was taking out the old upper felt assembly that these pieces were facing the other way. These, these plastic pieces were actually sticking out into this section over here which actually when the dryer door is open you could feel those and I think that when I did this repair years ago I may have installed this backwards inadvertently and I think maybe something had snagged on this edge here and maybe ripped one of these out. Maybe been the cause of the failure, or it could just be wear. We may never know. But I looked at the uh, the picture really closely, and I could see the little plastic rivets or little plastic pieces, posts that actually hold these pieces into the felt, are supposed to be closer to this edge, not the inside edge over here. So I believe this is the correct way that this is supposed to go in. Okay, so here's what the uh, bearing bracket assembly looks like when installed from the inside. Should be should go in just like this, all right? Which is simple enough. The trick is on the back side of this, in that little hole, is where this little ball. Which, believe it or not, this is actually the purpose of this ball is to actually electrically ground the um, the whole uh, tumbler assembly or barrel assembly, drum, I'm sorry, the drum, <laughs> to electrically ground the drum assembly to the rest of the dryer. Um, I'm assuming that what would happen is if that wasn't grounded, then quite frankly, this thing would probably build up a huge static electric charge and uh, turn this thing into a, uh, a Van de Graaff generator of sorts. <laughs> so, the trick is you got to hold this in, put the ball in on the back side, and then without the ball falling out, you put this clip over with the concave side facing the screws and tighten this up. So there you go, that's obviously the problem there. So a second set of hands is really helpful. I'm going to try this one more time. Actually I was able to do it on my own. Uh, it's a little tricky but it can be done with a little perseverance. If you, uh, if you are successful, you'll know it because the ball will be smiling at you with that little point right there. I suppose you could also put a little dab of grease on the ball and use the grease to stick it, to have it kind of stick in the hole there. So there's the other part of the ball bearing assembly. Um, this plate right here is screwed in from the inside of the drum, but before I take it out, I'm just going to do a quick job of cleaning out this lint that I see in here. Boy, that grease is... I think what's happened is lint got in there with that grease and turned it into this coagulation of a mess. Remove the three screws from the inside and the old bearing assembly drops right off. You want to have something 
so it doesn't fall and damage the floor or wherever the surface is you're working on. Then the, then the next trick is getting the new screws in. Uh, it comes with three self-tapping screws, but they're pretty hard to drive in, so my recommendation would be that you actually screw the screws into this piece before you install this piece on the drum and then take the screws back out, put the piece on, and then put it in. And again, uh, an extra set of hands at this juncture certainly would be welcome. If you're fortunate, you can use a magnetic tip screwdriver and if you have long enough arms, you can have actually reach in, push a, through, a screw through, then seat this. Um, even my, with my long arms, I can't actually look at this while I'm doing it. So what I do is I put my finger over the hole and then position this, get it started, turn it, tighten it down. Once I tighten it down, swivel into position to line up these holes. Now I can turn it up like this and I can let gravity help me put the two remaining screws in. Alright, good to go. Now I want to use the enclosed tube of lubricant to lube up this cup really well where that ball is going to be spinning. Nice liberal coating of grease on there, on there. In preparation for reinstalling the drum, I've looped the belt around it, being careful not to get any grease on the belt or the drum. So I got the drum back into position. You got to uh, have that ball kind of up high and let it slide down into the cup and then I reattach this little plastic bracket right here. Again, that keeps this from being able to just fall out. Now, I've got to get this whole front assembly back on to the machine, and I've got to guide the uh, new felt and glides into this surface right here. All right, we're in the uh, home stretch, so to speak. Now that I've got the uh, drum in, before I install the new idler pulley and reattach the uh, belt to the motor pulley. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to try spinning this. Oh yeah, that's a lot easier to turn than it was before. This little idler pulley assembly, this actually pivots on like a split washer pivots on this piece right here so what actually happens is when you undo if you take this spring off the whole thing just comes right out the new one drops in like that spring hooks in the hole on this side and then of course well the question is well, why is the spring coming off that's because this is actually normally being pushed back by the belt that way. So I'm just gonna take the spring off, get this out of the way for a moment, get my belt down here into position. All right, so now I got the belt going around the pulley and then the belt's gonna go up and over the top of the pulley in this position when I have that idler, pull, idler pulley like this. The belt is now on the top. And then what's going to happen is, as I pull this lever down, it's actually going to start tensioning that belt. So then I got to get my spring back on in position, oops, into the holes, and that's it. That's how it works. I could put this cover back on. And the last thing I needed to do was re-splice these wires, that, these two wires I had to cut, and reinstall a uh, zip tie here. And this just basically keeps this up here so it doesn't settle down over time and start to rub against the drum. I'm going to do a quick test before I rest it all back up into position. More thud, thud, thud. So, just gonna put this uh, lit trap piece back in. 
get it back up on top of the washing machine and we can call this one done. I hope this video helped you, um, uh, you know, with your repairs. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Take care.